The law enforcement officer must stay alert to stay alive. Although you are quite vulnerable to attack, you are not defenseless. For the hands and other parts of the body are valuable personal weapons for defense and counterattack. The hand, used as a fist, is the most common personal weapon, but other parts of the hand may also be used effectively. At times, the elbow may be a better and more powerful weapon. The foot and knee can have damaging effect. These personal weapons of defense are most effective when applied to structurally weak areas of the body. Blows or pressure directed against any of these vulnerable areas will cause severe pain, loss of consciousness, or even more serious results. In the regions of the head and face are found several vulnerable points. A number of effective blows can be delivered here at the temple. The eye. The bridge of the nose. And base of the nose and upper lip. The lower lip the chin. In the throat, a multitude of blood, air, and nerve lines can be severely injured by a blow or pressure directed against the Adam's apple area. Further down the body, a sudden weakening effect, even crippling, might be caused by a counterattack aimed at the region of the heart, the solar plexus, the stomach, and other abdominal organs. The groin. The legs and feet are particularly susceptible to injury through pressure directed against the joints or blows delivered to areas where bones are located near the surface of the skin. The backs of these limbs also provide areas where damage can be inflicted. The hands and arms are equally susceptible to injury through pressure against the joints or blows directed against bones near the surface. Additional vulnerable areas located on the back of the body are the spinal column, which houses the spinal cord, the tailbone, internal organs such as the kidneys, the liver, the back and side of the neck, the mastoid, and the ear. It is difficult to find a single area where the proper type of counterattack, skillfully executed, will not handicap or severely injure the criminal who attacks you. Here in the FBI gymnasium, officers studying defensive tactics learn that a basic principle is balance. Only from a well-balanced position can you realize your maximum speed, power, and accuracy in physical movement. In achieving this type of balance, proper leg and foot position is of primary importance. One position of the feet offers better balance than another. 
but only by constantly shifting the feet and body with the direction of the attack can a well-balanced position be maintained. With proper balance, the principle of leverage can be employed. Leverage is a great equalizer. By skillful use of this factor, it is possible for you to overcome a stronger opponent. The hip throw illustrates how the muscles of the trunk and good general body mechanics can be used to put into practice the principle of leverage. Maximum strength should be directed against a point of minimum strength. The finger lock, more effective than a strenuous counter assault. Despite physical appearances, always assume that your adversary possesses greater strength. Then use your strength to direct his movements. By pulling when he pushes, pushing when he pulls, it is possible to use the adversary's strength and momentum to your own advantage. Even when on a routine assignment, a knowledge of defensive tactics is important for your protection and to assure that the arrest will be successfully made. In any situation, you should always be aware of the possibility of danger from an unexpected source. Obain? Huh? Are you Frank Obain? What about it? You got a minute? I'd like to talk with you. I ain't running out to no charter parties today. Well, that's not it. I'm Special Agent Putnam of the FBI. Oh? Well, come on aboard. So what's on your mind? It's just a routine check, Frank. I just wondered if you'd heard anything about your brother Roy. I reckon you're gonna have to ask him yourself. That's right, get him up. Start the engine, Frank. My old pal wants to take a swim. Well, it's good to see you anyway, Roy. Knock off the chatter, pal. Get back. Frank, hold it, both of you. Put your hands up. Way up. You just saw a criminal disarmed. His mistake was holding his gun within reach of the officer. Never hold your gun within reach of a criminal. This is emphasized in the FBI National Academy. Indeed a formidable weapon, but only when handled properly. Disarming is a highly dangerous maneuver and should be attempted only when extreme necessity demands. Though the gun need not be in front of you, it must be within your reach. Judge your distance and act quickly without telegraphing your plan. To move the muzzle away from the body, you have less than half a second. In a large eastern city, two officers were about to make a routine inquiry in an effort to pick up information concerning a fugitive. like some help from you. Like what? We're trying to locate this man. Have you seen him in here? Mm, no. Ken says as I have. A lot of guys come in here, you know, and... Look out! We're FBI agents. Come on, get up out of there. Get up! Looks like he means business, coppers. In this situation, the officer's hands were held together to form a wedge to catch the attacker's wrist. Then, a personal weapon was immediately used to subdue the assailant. When necessary to force a reluctant criminal through a doorway, Tactics should be employed that take maximum advantage of his exposed, vulnerable areas. As for a knife wielder, fighting him from a half-sitting, half-supine position can at times be effective. Now let's observe the experience of two officers tracking down some stolen property. Mrs. Jones? 
No, I ain't Mrs. Yost. I'm the housekeeper. What do you want? Well, I'd like to see Mr. Yost. Well, he ain't here. Do you know where I can find him? Well, you might find him down at the barn. Thank you. Search warrant for these premises. Come on, get up. I ain't a going no place. I said get up. Watch him, Ed. We'll put him up against the barn over here and search him. In review, note the almost instinctive defense against the club. The blow is blocked and the arm is immediately trapped. Before the attacker has time to recover, other personal weapons are brought into play rendering him unfit for further combat. A come-along hold brings him to his feet and eliminates further resistance. Speed and surprise were effectively used to repel this attack, but knowledge and skill are worthless unless you are ready at all times, your whole body and balance, ready to defend yourself even in the most innocent appearing circumstances. The FBI and other law enforcement agencies never condone the use of brutality or unnecessary and unreasonable force but a knowledge of defensive tactics is essential for your protection and to discharge your responsibilities under the law. Training is necessary. Practice is important. Experience is not always the best teacher. In self-defense, you may get no second chance.